Hey guys, so Funcom put out an announcement recently on Twitter, Steam and their forums that they would be removing some of the official servers on PC and PlayStation. The rationale behind this decision and some comments on the future of the game were discussed during these posts, so let's take a look at the announcement and of course the key points. To keep things short and sweet, Funcom need to reduce the number of official servers on the aforementioned platforms, probably to reduce overhead costs and to improve the official server experience. They explain that these servers were designed to provide more than enough room for big influxes of players in the early access launch, the full launch of the game and the Siptar launch, and now that the community has gravitated into regular patterns of play, some of the less used servers need to be cleaned up. In this post, Funcom acknowledged that many players have chosen to move away from official servers in favour of player-owned private servers with different XP rates, player limits, or in the case of PC, modded servers. This is a prevailing trend that has been happening over the years, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's fairly natural, but a consequence is that many official servers sit near empty for a long time, with maybe only two or three players even at peak hours. Funcom state that this isn't the desirable gameplay experience, which I personally agree with, and thus they'll be removing certain low population servers so that players that wish to play with other players actually can, whereas people that prefer playing solo or in a small group can play on single player, co-op or unofficial servers. If you're a player on one of these low population servers you might be a bit worried hearing about this. However, Funcom have laid out a clear plan of action for this process that will hopefully ease the transition for any worried players. When the server is shut down, all characters will be transferred to another server with everything in their inventory. This transfer isn't subject to the no encumbrance rule, however you will still log in in the southern desert so you may have to trek a little while to get to where you want to be. No structures will be transferred unfortunately, however the two main reasons behind that are, firstly, there could already be a building in the same spot, especially if it's in a popular location, and secondly, it would make an already in-depth database merge significantly more complicated. You could of course get around this by dismantling the major parts of your base or the expensive components to make sure you can take them with you to your new server, but wholesale structures won't be coming with you. The server shutdowns won't just come out of the blue, instead players will be notified ahead of time through the message of the day on their server when they log into the server, and there will be a list of servers and dates published as they are decided, so you'll have time to prepare for the transfer. Characters on a closed server will be transferred to a server in the same region. For example, if you play on a US East Coast server, your new server will be on the East Coast, it won't be on the West Coast, so your gameplay experience in regards to ping and lag should hopefully be the same as it was on your previous server. Currently, Funcom are estimating about one third of official servers on PC and PlayStation will be closed based on player activity trends and projections for future updates. This isn't evenly distributed across platform, region, mode and map, thusly more servers may be shut down in regions that have lower populations overall, or more types of servers may be shut down. For example, you may see more PvE or PvEC servers shut down compared to PvP servers. By virtue of Conan Exiles being on Xbox Game Pass, official servers on the Xbox platform have quite a healthy population, and thus only a few servers that were opened in the wrong region will be closed hence why these closures affect almost exclusively PC and PlayStation. Exact numbers concerning all the closures will be available when the server names and dates are available soon. Deciding which servers to close is a decision that Funcom are basing on a few different things. Firstly, the goal is to impact as few players as possible, so the decision will be factored based on low population in January as a primary factor. However, as a secondary factor, average and peak population are also considered, though average is more important. Low populated servers will have some weight on the number of structures on the server, and for the destination servers that you'll land on once your original server is closed, the aim is to increase average population across the board, and not to create logging queues. This is probably why the server queue feature was added in a recent update, just in case there are any servers that hit the player cap, but generally this isn't the aim, as players will be evenly sprinkled throughout the official servers rather than dumped into one until it's full and then moved to the next. In regards to the future, Funcom recognises that the player base's proclivity towards private servers and community servers and such will probably continue, though they expect the game to grow even more so it's hard to predict too far ahead. It's possible that, in the future, Funcom may close more official servers if needed, but it's also possible they may need to open new servers in the future. 
they seem to be predicting a sizable influx of players in the future, as there are a few lines in this update that hint at exciting things coming this year, which is probably going to be update 3.0. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this in the comments below. Personally, I'm definitely a fan of this move, it's no secret that quite a few unofficial servers sit pretty much dormant, seeing maybe 2, 3 or 4 players a day, and there are probably some that have a grand total of 0 players and have done for a while. By closing these servers and pushing players together, along with the changes to PvP building, I think the aim is to encourage people to actually engage in PvP, PvE or PvEC in the intended way, rather than each player kind of playing a solo game that happens to have one or two other players wandering past every so often. I think the Conan player base has already shown that unofficial servers is just the way they prefer to play, and sometimes that can't be helped, and really, it shouldn't be helped if players want to play like that. Whether this move will be successful to the official servers is something that remains to be seen, but even though the change is at least in part to save money on underutilised servers, it'll be interesting to see how this change affects the game. Hopefully, it's in a positive way. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. On that note, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, Illfated, CoffeeMan04, Marion Ladd, Alfric and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.